welcome back. We have a special healthy treat for you this evening. Laurie Jacobson of Nature's Kitchen has stopped by to help us prepare uh, some of the most wonderful wintry dishes you can imagine. Laurie, um, there's no question about the fact that Americans are eating smarter, they're eating lighter. I don't know if you saw this, but there was a recent uh, survey taken nationwide, and 91% of the respondents said that they changed their eating habits in the last two years. That's good news, isn't it? That's wonderful news. People are waking up. Good, healthy nutrition is very important. And, and you talk about whole food, the importance of eating whole food. It sounds like maybe it doesn't need a definition, but by definition, what is whole food? Well, whole foods are foods that have not been refined, they haven't been processed, they haven't had additives or mm -hmm. preservatives uh, added to them. It's in its whole state as much as possible. And the best example I can give is a grain of brown rice compared to a grain of white rice. Brown rice has only had the hull taken off and that's mm -hmm. it. It still has the germ, still has the endosperm, the fiber. I think we have so much to talk about, but we have to get Laurie to start cooking because she's making first this yummy um, squash. Squash carrot soup. Oh. This is one of my absolutely favorite soups. First of all, it's it's got a creamy texture and there's not a bit of cream in it. There's no dairy, there's no meat in this soup, which makes it a cholesterol-free soup and it's loaded with beta carotene and fiber so it's very helpful and the taste is so large for such a simple soup. Okay now you start with whole food so we don't go out and buy the, the frozen squash. Nope. You go out and you buy the whole squash. What do you look for? Well what I look for in squashes are, are the color. Uh, buttercup squash happens to be in this soup and you want a nice green color. This is the perfect time of year to use winter squashes. Mm -hmm. They're sweet as sugar and in this dish I combine buttercup squash with carrots and some onions and the secret of this recipe that really make, makes this texture so velvety are rolled oats. That thickens it up and this is um, not a whole grain, it, it's a slightly processed grain but very healthful for you. Okay, now let's get started. Mm -hmm. okay. What's the first well, step? Well, basically, this recipe is so easy. I hope that everybody tries oh, don't it. Don't you at love home. it? It's, it's, it, so it's easy. a snap. Um, because these are the ingredients right here. There are no other ingredients except a little bit of sea salt. You chop your vegetables um, and simmer them in water. And I have already done that here. The carrots, the squash, you can see, and these little bit of rolled oats and the onions with the sea salt. And once um, you cook this all together about 20 minutes or so, everything will thicken up and then we put it in the processor. Laurie, did, mm -hmm. did you put any water in there? Yes, yes. You, you just, just basically cover the vegetables right. with water, bring everything to a boil and simmer. And, uh, I always have problems like. with the squash. They're, mm -hmm. they're so hard to cut. I sometimes well. stick it in the microwave and, and soften it a little bit. Is well, that okay? As, uh, I'm not crazy about microwaves, no, to be see, quite see, honest Laurie with you. A, Laurie has a, a natural food company <laughs> called Natural Nature's Kitchen. Nature's Kitchen, yes. and she cooks just natural stuff. Lives, I got to tell you a little bit about her. She lives way out in the country, not too far from Pittsburgh. No, I come in. Pittsburgh I said to her, "Do you think you'll you'll watch this?" On she said, "I don't have a television." You're not supposed to. Tell television said she lives in the country she cooks mm -hmm. everything natural I cook a lot I she cook cooks a lot, lot. <laughs> but you just I bet you grow a lot of this stuff well I'll have to tell you I did harvest 250 pounds of winter squash from my garden last year I love winter squash and if you haven't tried it please buy a winter squash just slice it in half and bake it in the oven and you will be amazed. And you don't have to put butter and brown sugar in it. No, it's sweet as sugar. You don't you don't need that. Alright, so now mm -hmm. if you can't slice it easily, I okay. mean what do you do? Well, Just take a it, I encourage everyone to get into the kitchen and if you're in the kitchen you should have a nice sharp knife that you're comfortable with um, and really it's just a matter of practice you know getting the point inserted and then really what I do is I just rotate it mm -hmm. breaks right open mm -hmm. scoop out the seeds mm -hmm. um, some recipes most recipes I leave the skin on this skin will cook up soft mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for this recipe however when I want I don't want any skin in this soup I just want that nice beautiful orange color I will cut the skin skin off and then put cut it in chunks. Lori, um, we haven't mm -hmm. talked about any uh, any measurements. Mm -hmm. I see you have six six carrots, okay. four onions, 
and one squash. Well, and well, is that about it? Basically, for this recipe, and um, I think people can write in to get this okay. recipe also, but equal amounts, equal amounts of squash and carrots, mm -hmm. couple okay, of so onions. If, if you're going to put it in a measuring cup, if you right. have a cup of squash, you have a cup right. of carrots, right. cup of onions. Right. I usually start out with maybe three cups of each, three cups of squash, three cups of carrots, two or three onions, and for that, we would use about half a cup of the rolled oats. Mm -hmm. Cover with water. See, good Do you cook the oats first? No, you just put the oats right in and it will all cook up together and you can see how creamy the oats it's make oh. this dish. It's, oh. it's, it's, it's beautiful. And, and the taste of this is, is just incredible. I like this soup mm -hmm. because it is a fairly light soup if you don't want um, you know, a real heavy soup to start the meal. Let's mm -hmm. say you're having a heavier dinner. You want to start out with something light to wake up the taste buds, and this will absolutely okay. do it. All right, are you going yeah. to, to Yeah, I'll it just for show us? people how this how this works. We'll just add the the uh, cooked vegetables and oatmeal. Yeah, that should be enough just to give people an idea. And we'll just process this, and you'll see how it blends. And you can blend it even further to get more of the chunks out, but um, blended soups are fun. They're Laurie, really a lot great. of people are very busy today, and you just don't have enough time to spend hours in the kitchen. This would be, I, I would imagine, a soup that you could prepare on a weekend and, and freeze. Does it Absolutely, freeze well? Absolutely, yeah. I, I, you can prepare it. it. Really, it'll only take maybe even 20 minutes or a half an hour to prepare this soup. This is a very easy soup. Cut up the vegetables, boil them, process it. And the important thing is it is low fat, so it's, it's, it's wonderful for any of you who are either trying to watch your weight, uh, you know, watch your weight, mm -hmm. or for health reasons, if you have, you know, a problem with your heart, with diabetes, uh, actually Actually, I think that uh, any uh, any health problem that you can name is going to benefit from from this kind oh, of eating. Absolutely, and what I love about this soup too is it's so high in beta carotene. Anytime you see this orange color, which is an antioxidant, which is an anti, well, it's a cancer fighting. Absolutely, property. but you, but but the thing is, you're getting this beta carotene directly from the whole food. You're not taking a pill of it, which is something completely different. You know, when you talk about whole foods, this is a whole food. Okay. You know, and this is also the vegetables are loaded with fiber. A, a high fiber diet goes along with a low-fat diet and that's very important for um, keeping the colon clean and um, and I think for those of us who love to eat <laughs> love to eat the other advantage is that you never have to be hungry and you can eat as much as you want. Lori, look at the size oh. of her teeny tiny little Lori and she said <laughs> she just eats tons and tons of whole food. Now when we come back we're going to uh, show you how to make a stew that is sure to satisfy and it's good for you too. We're cooking with Lori Jacobson so stay with us. Welcome back to our Agewise Kitchen. If you're with us on a regular basis, you know that we are committed on this show to, to make sure that we all live the healthiest life possible. And it all begins with the kind of food we eat. And we go in search of some of the best people anywhere. And we found Laurie Jacobson right in our own backyard. And, and she made the, the carrot uh, squash soup. And by the way, that's her own recipe. You're not going to find that in any book. And now, for something a little heartier, you want something that's a complete meal. We have, what, a lentil stew? Right. This is a barley lentil stew. And you're right, Eleanor. The, the reason I selected to do this soup, this stew for you today is because it is a nice contrast from the lighter mm -hmm. uh, blended soup. This is and can be a meal in itself if you want because, and this is loaded with whole foods. You have the, the lentils, 
which are legumes, a whole food, and the barley. This is uh, what we call hulled barley, and I do like to soak the barley a little bit before cooking. And we have a, a lot of uh, nice winter and autumn vegetables simmering here with lots of seasonings. It's very tasty, very hearty, very stick to your and ribs. Barley is so good for you. Oh, if you have any barley. kind of gastrointestinal problems, mm -hmm. any kind of problems with your stomach. I mean, mm -hmm. I know my grandma, when I was a little girl, she used to make meat barley soup if I had an upset stomach, and I've made it for my kids, and it really does work. I love barley, and when you think about it, too, barley is, is the most ancient cultivated grain. They ate barley and lentils, in fact, in ancient Greece. Mm -hmm. um, that was the, part of their staple f uh, nourishment. Now how do we begin with this? You, okay. Let's go over here. Right. right? The, the way that you start, now this it, recipe is just a teeny bit more complex than the last one, but it is a, more, a heartier soup. You start by cooking off the lentils and the barley together, and that's what this looks like. You cook that together until the barley gets nice and soft. It should take maybe about 20 or 30 minutes mm -hmm. and then you set that aside. And then in a separate skillet you're going to saute vegetables and you can, re this is really where you have the opportunity to season these vegetables Okay, saute, that means oils. What, what do you right. use? I like to use um, a toasted sesame oil for this recipe which is a wonderful, wonderful cook okay. oil. It happens to be organic and we heat and that up. that's a healthy fat. It's a good fat. Sesame oil um, has some uh, essential fatty acid in it, so mm -hmm. it, it's very good fat for you. And then, of course, we have to add some garlic to that to mm -hmm. season it up, and some tamari soy sauce, which is a naturally fermented soy sauce okay. with very good ingredients in it. And the vegetables I chose uh, for this stew, um, parsnips, which is a wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. um, a winter vegetable and very sweet with carrots and some mushrooms because mm -hmm. you can't have barley without mushrooms. Mm -hmm. You gotta throw some mushrooms in there. Mm -hmm. So we saute that up and season it and then once um, the vegetables are are sauteed maybe three or four minutes, go ahead and add the vegetables to the cooked barley and lentils and mix that in. And that's mm -hmm. what I pretty much have here, only we do have to simmer this um, a good 20 minutes to get these vegetables nice and soft. Open the door, open the window, okay. and you can smell. <gasps> the aroma okay. is incredible. <laughs> And, and then the very last part of this dish, which I really love, is we have to get something green in there. So mm -hmm. I have some chopped kale. And if you just, at the very end of this stew, turn toss the kale in and you'll see that it will just melt in there. It, it's better than parsley. Oh, you know, for all you meat and potatoes guys out there that say you just have to have, you know, food like you've always eaten it, even though it might not be good for your cardiovascular system and it might not be good for your weight, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of just changing our, our eating habits, our tastes, and this is every bit as satisfying. It, it's a transition. I'm not going to, to lie to people. I mean, you, if you're willing and committed to make mm -hmm. a transition, to change your diet, you don't have to do everything at once. Mm -hmm. Master a few dishes mm -hmm. and start incorporating them into your diet. It can be slowly. In fact, if you do it slowly, it will stay with you longer rather than trying to do everything at once. Well, it's, it's almost a creative art form. Uh, when, when you take all of these wonderful ingredients and you chop them and, 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 and you know that they're going to make you feel good because I think that the one thing that we're all short of in, in this country in our fast-paced life is energy. And uh, I know just from my own personal experience, when I eat right, I have energy. When I don't eat right, my body talks that, to me. That's absolutely true and and I'm seeing in a lot of people I consult with people that don't have good energy. People are tired all the time. There are mm -hmm. a lot of autoimmune mm -hmm diseases going around mm -hmm. and if we go back to the whole mm -hmm. foods, go back to nature, to nature's mm -hmm. whole foods, we're getting the maximum mm -hmm. amount of nutrition. Mm -hmm. We're not eating devitalized, processed and refined foods and we're creating a sense of balance in our bodies that is so oh, important. We could, we could go on and on about balance, but... Okay. Um, uh, now this is a hearty winter mm. stew. This would be, uh, I would guess it would be a meal in itself. Take it to what lunch. would you do, take a, a salad with this maybe? Well it, it de well, it depends on the weather too. I do cook according to season, but yeah, a nice, uh, something light would complement this. Mm -hmm. e even a bowl of steamed greens. I put the greens in here to lighten it up. Okay, a and this is the salad, kale, right? Perhaps. This is kale loaded with calcium, loaded with minerals, dark leafy greens are are a wonderful source of nutrition. And I know that a lot of you have problems. You're, you're asked to stay on a low so 
sodium diet. And as you notice, Lori used a, a tamari sauce, and, and it has, she started to tell me, and I'm not going to ask her, but she said, if you ever knew what goes into table salt, you would never, ever use it, so. And that's true, you throw the well, table salt away. <laughs> Lori, I want to thank you so much for coming by and sharing these, these heart-healthy recipes with us. And if you missed any ingredient here or there, you would like to have a complete copy of Laurie's recipes, and they are her original recipes, just write to us here at AgeWise and we'll get the recipe out to you right away. Our address is going to be on our screen in just a moment, and AgeWise will be back next week. Hope you'll join us. Until then, I'm Eleanor Shano, and remember, the good years start right here. Good night. Set furnished by Linder & Associates, McKees Rocks, Pennsylvania.